Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click. I'm very excited to show you some of the new features that are available in the June 2017 release. In this particular video, I'm going to do things a little bit differently. Instead of going through a PowerPoint with some slides, I'm going to jump right into the new features and uh, I will break it up a bit because we have a lot of new features in this release, some having to do with visual data preparation and then others having to do with visual analytics. Uh, and then there's other features within the enterprise server and the management console as well. You could refer to the release notes in the Click Online Help for more information. Okay, so I'm in ClickSense Desktop here, and these features will be available in ClickSense Enterprise and ClickSense Cloud as well. So I already have an app created. I'm gonna click that app. And I'm gonna add some data. And this is our new data manager screen. You will have a subset of these data sources depending on which edition you're using. Desktop and Enterprise will include all these sources. ClickSense Cloud will have a subset of these sources. Now I'm going to get some file-based data from my computer and my C drive and sample. And I'm going to start out with the orders file. And at this point here, you can choose to include or not include the different columns. You could also rename them. Depending on the file type, you also can make some fine-tune adjustments with the different options that will be available in the top. Now, at this point here, you'll notice that there's a button where you could enable or disable data profiling. If you're confident in your data set and you want to start analyzing and creating visualizations right away, you can turn this off and then click Add Data. At this point, I want to show you some of the new features in visual data preparation, so I'm going to click on Add Data while leaving Data Profiling Enabled. Okay, and that'll bring us to this particular view here. Now this bubble represents the table that we just loaded. So at this point, if I select the table, I can view the columns and the rows. I also can switch views to look at a table view or the associations view. You'll see the associations view in a moment. So at this point, I'm gonna click edit. And what we will do is actually select the first column and depending on if that column is a measure or a dimension, it will actually display a distribution of all of the values. So we do some distribution profiling here of the data values. So you can see the distinct values, total number of values, and you can see the representation in this chart. And if it's a measure, in this case selecting sales, you can see that not only do we show the distribution of the values, but we also give you a value range including minimum, median, average, and max, as well as the ability to create a new attribute, for example, to bin or bucket the size of the particular sales value, for example. So in this case here, what I'm going to do is let's create three buckets. And by default, we have a range of these buckets and we can name the values that we want to display. So in this case, maybe these are small deals. And then the next one is medium. And the last one is large. And if I wanted to make adjustment to the values, I can grab these little icons and slide them left and right to adjust the deal size, or I can type them in here. Okay, so now we have small, medium, and large deals. At this point, I'll click Create Buckets. Click OK. And now I have my new column called Sales Bucketed. I can call it Deal Size and press Enter. And there are my values. Okay, so at this point, I want to add some more data. So let's add some more dimensional data, like products and customers. So I'm going to go back to my associations view, and I'm going to click on this little plus icon to add data, go back to my computer, and this time I'm going to select Smart Customer. And I already have customers selected. I also want to choose Products, and then click Add Data. Okay, and now you can see it added those additional tables. Now in previous releases of ClickSense, if you have already seen visual data preparation, you may know that we can link these together by selecting a particular table and then looking at the recommendation of how these tables can associate. And again, I use the term associate because we don't join like a typical query-based or SQL-based visualization tool. In this case, we're associating either on the common column name within both tables or 
a profiling algorithm will run and it'll choose a subset of the values and see which one has a closest match. For example, customer number and customer ID might not have the same name, but they have the same order value and that might be a suggested match. And you'll see that in a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna focus on a couple more features. So this time I'm gonna click on the edit button for products and you're gonna see here, for example, location code. Okay, so let's say location code is the location of where the product is, for example, in the store. Maybe the first number is the aisle, the second number is the bay, and the third number is the bin, similar to the way, let's say, Home Depot does it, if you're familiar with the way they locate their products. So if I choose this particular column, not only do you see the distribution of values, but you also now have another subset of transformation operations that allow you to enrich this data set. So for example, I can choose to replace values. I can choose to set values to null. I can choose to set the order of how I want these values displayed within the data model, or I can split on a common delimiter. For example, in this case, we have the, uh, the dot here. And what I can do is I can select these particular dots in this case here, and then select all instances. And what that will do is break up that particular location code value into three separate attributes or columns or dimensions. So now I can call this one aisle. And this one can be called bay. And this one can be called bin. And then click create fields. Okay, and now we have aisle, bay, and bin for our location code. Now, for example, in product names, let's say there's a particular product that um, we're not selling anymore. So maybe in this particular case here, this uh, bow tie, we don't have bow ties anymore. So in this case here, I'm going to choose the set nulls value, search for bow tie, and set that value to null. And that basically means that now that particular value will come up as a null within the value for that particular column. Okay, so just wanted to give you a couple examples of the features that are available within this data manager view within visual data preparation. What we're going to do next is we're going to add another table and that table is going to be created, let's say, from a data load script. So let's go back to our associations view. Now we have orders, we have customers, and we have products. Now I also have a table categories. But for this example, and to demonstrate this new feature, let's imagine that in ClickView, we have a load script. Okay, now I've kept it very simple to demonstrate the point, but imagine you've created a load script with variables and other functions and methods that comprise of a table. And you wanna include that within ClickSense and you wanna take advantage of the visual data preparation features in the associations view. So let me give you a quick example. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this script, just do control C, and you can see we have a map reference, we're doing a mapping load, and we're basically taking the category ID and creating a new column called department and representing these values when the category ID equals a specific number. And then we have our category table, and it's being loaded from an Excel file. So what I'll do now is go back into ClickSense, and what we're gonna do is go into the data load editor, And above the auto-generated section, I'm gonna create a new tab and we're gonna call this scripted table. And I'm gonna paste it in. At of the time of this recording, this script that is gonna create this table needs to be created above the auto-generated section. And just for your reference here, the auto-generated section is what the data wizard and the visual data preparation pieces create. And you can see, basically it's generating uh, this script under the covers. Okay, and because we're using ClickSense, we're not using this type of reference, we're using the live reference, uh, LIB live, so we're gonna use that, and you can see I have the folder called sample already created, and that's how it's gonna reference that table. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna load that data, and I'm gonna go back to the visual data preparation view, and you can see that it displays the cat table, but I can't do any of the visual association capabilities. I can't um, go into any of the visual data preparation features, but the new feature here, synchronize scripted tables. And it shows you this table is added using the data load script, blah, blah, blah. 
basically when we click this button it's going to parse that structure and make it available to then be used within visual data preparation and now you can see I could use it just like any other table that I had before and use all the different functions okay so now back in our associations view we're going to link these pieces together I'm just going to choose the wizard and that automatically links them together okay and we can see that customers and orders are linked together on customer ID and customer number orders and products are linked on product ID and orders and product ID and products and products and the cat table or the category table are linked on products category ID and the cat table category ID okay so the final new feature in the June 2017 release that I would like to present to you within visual data preparation is the ability to do concatenation without having to write any script now for those of you who are familiar concatenation of tables basically will take the same columns from another data file that match up to another table and it'll create a concatenation of that data in other words it'll append that data to that individual table okay but there is a statement called concatenate that you would use in the load script well you can do that now inside the visual data preparation so let's imagine we have a customer list that we've already added these are our new customers and then let's say we have a, a legacy customer list with some of our other customer numbers we need to add to this data set so I'm going to click on the plus symbol go to my computer and I have a file here called legacy customer and you can see it's got account ID instead of customer ID address city contact country customer name tell country code ISO country code so we're going to add that data okay I want to add my legacy customers and concatenate it to my new customer list so what I do is I click on this little button down here and select concatenate tables okay then I choose the tables I want to concatenate in this case I have customer selected and you can see customer number address city contact name I choose legacy customer list and you can see legacy customer list address the city so this is showing me or identifying the columns and matching up the particular columns that might be the closest from the new customer list and the legacy customer list now as you look at this you can see oh I don't have a customer number for my legacy customer list if you remember we had something called account ID customer name this customer name country list country contact okay so these pretty much map to the particular columns that I'm interested in well I need to edit some additional mappings and I need to see those fields so I click the fields button and you can see that we have account ID if I hover over the exclamation it says this field is added to the table but is not mapped to another field well I know account ID can map to customer number so I'm just gonna drag it and drop it right here and then I'm gonna review my other field mappings these look good contact name country we could rename these as we go fax number I'm not going to use now phone we have something called tell so that's going to map to phone and then we're not going to use postal code we'll keep the country codes and then we don't need customer ID or base currency so basically all our fields are mapped I could then preview the data this looks great I click apply and now we have our concatenated customer list from the legacy one and the original one now at this time I can load the data and then edit my sheet and I can start creating my visualizations so at this time we're going to stop this video and I'm going to create a new video that are going to show some of the new features that have to do with new visualizations and visual analytics now this video will be posted on YouTube as well as embedded in a document in the Click community along with the sample data that I used and please leave any comments or questions and I will also post the other video in YouTube and link these two together via the document or the description. Alright guys, thanks for your time. I'll see you on the next video.